I'm going to show you how to set up a local development environment for Next.js, Superbase, and Stripe. This allows us to have a sandboxed environment where we can safely make changes and work on new features without breaking our production version of the application, stopping people who are literally willing to give us money from being able to do so. That's bad. So let's get into making it good. So here I have the production version of our application that we built in a previous video. Click that card above if you want to step through getting it to this point. But to configure our local development environment, let's start from the Vercel dashboard for our project and then over to the project tab. And then we can click here to open up our Git repository. And let's click here to get our clone URL. This could be HTTPS or SSH or using the GitHub CLI. I'm going to use SSH and then in a terminal, I'm going to say git clone and paste in that URL. And once that's finished, we can change into that directory. So it was subscription starter dash demo in my case. We can then open this one up in VS Code. Now we can run pmpm i or install to install our dependencies. And then over in our project, we want to rename this .env.local.example file to just not have the example at the end. So just .env.local. All these ones that have values are already pre-configured to point to our local development environment. So we just need to fill in our service role key for Superbase and then our Stripe keys. So let's start with these Stripe ones. So back over in the Stripe dashboard, our Stripe account is currently in live mode. So let's toggle this switch to test mode, which is what we're going to use for our local development. And we can see our red banner is back telling us we are using test data and real money will not be charged. This doesn't affect our production instance. It just enables test mode for what we're doing in the dashboard. So anything we change will be in this test mode sandbox, completely isolated from our application that our users are actually using. And now if we go to developers and then API keys and copy our publishable key and paste that one here and then grab our secret key and paste that one here. We can tell these are the test keys because they're prepended with test. So PK for publishable key and then test because our Stripe account is currently in test mode. And the same for our secret key, which also links to the test mode of our Stripe account. And so for our webhook secret, we want this to be listening and also forwarding to localhost so it's not messing with production. So we can use the Stripe CLI, which is installed as a dependency. So we can say pmpm Stripe colon login, and that's going to use the Stripe CLI to log into our Stripe account. So we can open this one up in a browser and thrill savvy gain vouch matches what's in the terminal. So I'm going to allow access. And now we can close this window and the Stripe CLI is now configured to work with our subscription starter demo account. And this one will expire in 90 days. So that's why we've included it as a dependency to make this as easy as possible. We then want to listen for those webhook events. So we can say pmpm Stripe colon listen. And now any of those webhook events will be forwarded to localhost over port 3000 slash API slash webhooks. So that will go to our Next.js route handler that will be running locally. And we can see this has printed out our webhook signing secret. So we can copy that from here and then go back to our .env.local file and paste it in as our Stripe webhook secret. In order to get our service role key for our locally running Superbase instance, we first need to configure some environment variables for OAuth. So let's rename this .env.example file to just be .env. And now this redirect URI, the client ID and client secret will be used to configure our Superbase instance that will be running locally. So the .env file used by Superbase, the .env.local file used by Next.js. So we're going to create a second OAuth app in GitHub to handle our local development. So let's copy this value from here and go over to GitHub. Again, click on our avatar, go down to settings, and then on the left, go down to developer settings at the bottom, click OAuth apps, new OAuth app. And just to make it clear, I'm going to use, I think the same name, which was subscription starter demo. And maybe I'll prepend this one with local just so that I know this is definitely using my local credentials. The homepage URL will be HTTP colon slash slash localhost over port 3000. And the authorization callback URL will be that one that we copied from the .env file. Now we can register our application. We can copy our client ID and paste it into our .env file. You can wrap these in quotes. I don't think it's needed, but just to be consistent with all of the other ones, we'll do quotes. And then our GitHub secret will generate a new one and then copy this one and paste it into our .env file. Again, let's put it in quotes just so it's yellow like the other ones and not white. And now we can forget about our .env file, but we still need this service role key for our .env.local file. So we've now configured everything for Superbase to 
be able to run locally, we need to leave this Stripe listener running in the background so we can create a new terminal. And here we can run pmpm superbase colon start. And we see this big scary error that it cannot connect to Docker because I forgot to run Docker. And I forgot to mention this command requires Docker. If you don't have Docker installed, you can follow this link to set it up. I use something called orbstack, which runs Docker for me. And so now that that's actually running, I'll run that same command. So pmpm superbase colon start. And once that's finished downloading the entire internet, it will print out all of the URLs and keys for all of the services that run as part of the Superbase stack, which is now running locally on our machine. So we need this service role key. So let's copy this value from here and paste it in our .env.local file. And now we have all of our environment variables configured so we can forget about that .env.local file and we can run the pmpm dev command to run our Next.js development server on localhost over port 3000. We can open that one up and we can see we have no pricing plans because this is linked to our local Superbase instance, which has the schema from this subscription starter template. But if we look at one of these tables, it doesn't have any of the data. The problem is when we created our products in Stripe, our webhook events were being sent to our hosted Superbase instance. When we activated our Stripe account and enabled live mode, this cloned everything from our test mode which is fine because it lines up perfectly with what we have in our hosted Superbase instance. But now that we're running a separate Superbase stack locally that doesn't have any of this data, we need to delete those pricing plans from our test mode account in Stripe and recreate them so those webhooks that are being forwarded to localhost tell Superbase that something has changed in Stripe and we need to add that data to our local instance. So back over in the Stripe dashboard, we can search for our products and go to our product catalog. And then we want to delete both of our subscription tiers, but just make sure one last time that your dashboard is in test mode. So if we click these three dots and say archive product, and yes, we're sure we want to archive it. And then we can archive our hobby plan and click archive product. And before we actually add these products again, just make sure that we're listening to those Stripe events and forwarding them to localhost. And then back over in the Stripe dashboard, let's add a product. We'll use the same names to keep these consistent. So hobby and the user can do five things. We want this to be a recurring payment of $20 monthly and click add product and then click into this one, scroll down to pricing and add another price. This one is going to be $200 yearly and let's create that price. And now if we scroll up, we can go back to our products and add a new product for our pro plan where the user can do 50 things. We want one pricing option for $50 monthly. And then let's add that product, click into pro, scroll down, add another price. And this one will be $500 charged yearly. And let's create that price. And if we go over to our Superbase dashboard and look at products, we should see our hobby and pro plans and under prices, our four pricing options. So back over in our Next.js app, if we refresh, we'll see all of that data is piped through correctly. We've got hobby and pro, we've got our monthly prices and our yearly prices, and we should be able to test our full flow of our application. So we should be able to authenticate with GitHub and we're not subscribed to any plans. So we can go back over to pricing and subscribe to this $20 a month plan. And we forgot to set up our customer portal for those new pricing plans. So back over in the Stripe dashboard, let's search for customer space portal and under settings, billing customer portal, we want to scroll down to subscriptions, make sure our customers can switch plans and let's remove these archived prices as options for our user to choose from. We can then click here to drop down our new test mode subscription plans and we can select each of these for the hobby and pro plans. Now we can click save changes and then back over in our Next.js application. Let's refresh just in case and then click subscribe. And this takes us to the Stripe dashboard where we can use that test card of all four twos and then 2424 and then 2424. We can have whatever name and let's do the address 123 Fake Street in Oak Lawn, Illinois and then scroll down and subscribe. And we can see we're now on that hobby plan and we can go over to account, confirm it's the hobby plan and $20 a month, and then open our customer portal and update our plan to be the pro plan. 
and then scroll down to continue, confirm these are the changes we want to make, and then back over in our Next.js app, we're now on the pro plan at $50 a month. We now have a near perfect clone of our entire SaaS's production stack running pretty much just on localhost. We have Next.js connecting to our local Superbase stack running in Docker, and our Stripe account that's safely in test mode, forwarding all of its webhook events to localhost so they can be handled by our Next.js app. This is pretty sick. But when we make those schema changes in Superbase, we probably shouldn't be pushing those changes directly to prod without a good deal of testing from ourselves or the team. You could manually create a second Superbase project for a staging or preview environment and do all of the work yourself keeping those in sync, or you could check out this video right here. We look at using branching to implement a similar flow to what we have in GitHub, where a new Superbase instance will be created for every single branch of our project. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.